Hey guys, how's it going? Corson Searles here, and welcome to another episode of the Daily C Show. I think this is the eighth episode. Super glad you're here. I really appreciate you taking the time to either listen to this on the podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, it's awesome. <laughs> it means a lot to me. So today we're going to address a couple things. Going to answer a couple more questions about uh, rookie stuff and rookie vet stuff. And then we're going to go into how I approach my on ice. And we're going to talk about how I like to structure my skill stuff. And then also how I try to approach improving in practice and just improving in games and a little bit of everything. I'll do a couple parts to this. I think I'll go into it in the next couple days as well. So stay tuned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button or make sure you're following on 519sportsonline.ca so that you can get uh, quick updates and keep in mind what's going on and you can continue to work with me and learn as we go. So thanks for watching. Have a great show. In this episode, I want to talk about a couple little things. I want to clear up a couple little answers that I got after I talked about uh, the, the advice I wish I got as a rookie. So again, just over to my right, if I look over like this, means that I'm kind of looking at the whiteboard questions that I've gotten written down for you guys. Um, so the first question is, um, how do you deal with hazing when it goes a little bit too far and bullying or whatever within within the room, not or whatever, but how do you deal with it within the room? And um, this is a tough one, and it's, it's very different. It's always situational, and I don't want to give one very general answer, but if I was to give one kind of piece of advice, what I would say is that the most important thing you can do is if there's an issue and you think something has gone too far, always go directly to the captain or one of the captains or one of the older leader guys that you trust and have a conversation with them. Approach them and pull them aside. Don't, don't do it in front of everyone, but pull them aside on their own and, and have a real talk and just say, you know what, I, I think things are gone, have gone too far in this situation or that situation and just, just be genuine with them and they will, they will definitely understand. And if they don't, and this goes for vets too, if a rookie comes to you and talks about this, you need to realize this is an, this is an important issue. It's not like it was before, which was like just before I got into the league where things were really lenient and you can kind of get away with whatever you wanted as a veteran, making rookies do whatever that you wanted them to. Now we kind of have to be a little smarter and you also need to be a little bit more respectful. And that is something that comes with basically you need to be, you need to listen. So you can push things a little bit, but if you, if one of them comes to you or some guys come to you and some of the vets even, vets need to realize that if you, th if you think some of the guys are going too far, you need to come together and you need to have discussions. Communication is, is the key. You need to over communicate. That is what's going to help a team continue to thrive because when there's issues in the room, if they don't get addressed, they kind of grow and they become a lot bigger deal than they need to be. But if you're a rookie or a vet and you think things are gone, have gone too far, talk to the captains and usually can be handled internally. If not, then what I would recommend is go to one of the people in the staff that you know the best and that you trust and just have a conversation with them. Communicate what's going on a little bit. You don't have to name names, but just be, be honest about it and say, you know what, I just think we need to address this and uh, get some information, see what they think you should do, see if you... they. If the captain wasn't listening and one of the older guys isn't listening, then maybe you have to kind of deal with it through through the coaching staff, which isn't always the ideal scenario, and I don't think coaches always love getting involved. But it's important because everybody's trying to win, so you need to, to maintain that, that great atmosphere in the room. Um, another thing, so people basically ask, this is the second question here, is how should rookies kind of deal in the room? So how should they... Um, or younger guys in general. I shouldn't just say rookies. I should say any of the younger guys. How, how do you approach being in the room and how much do you talk and how much should you kind of voice your opinion? And I actually have a pretty, pretty solid opinion on this. And basically what I think is that on the bench, I think you should be positive and I think you should talk strategy and you should just be continuing to pump everybody up. And I think that's the key on the bench. I think, don't think you should show any negativity any, because negativity and frustration shows weakness. So don't show that on the bench. Try not to because sometimes you might have to. Sometimes if the boys need that little bit of extra fire and you kind of yell like, come on, guys, let's go. Or, 
you know, there's going to be a little swearing involved there if you're a hockey guy or a hockey girl. You, you know what I'm talking about there. But uh, get excited. And that's sometimes that's the key. I, but for the most part, I would say like 99% of the time, it needs to be positivity and it needs to be talking strategy. So figuring out, okay, guys, like what can we do on this next shift? How can it work with your line mates? Talk and kind of put it all together. How can we improve? How can we move forward? Um, and then in the room, this is where negativity can be addressed. But the key is, again, if you have an issue that keeps lingering on, you need to address your captains or your older guys, and that needs to be addressed with those guys. They can address the room, and they can kind of come in and do their thing. As a rookie, I don't think that you should voice it out directly right away as a younger guy. Um, everybody has a different theory on this, situational again, but I definitely think that if it's really negative, like you think somebody's being lazy on the back check, um, it's probably not the best idea to just directly come at that guy and yell at him because it's just going to cause more conflict than there needs to be. So let the older guys deal with it and then approach the older guys if you want them to kind of deal with the specific issue. If they don't listen, don't be afraid to kind of say a little bit in the room and uh, be smart though. Be smart. <laughs> There's no perfect answer to this stuff. Okay. So I think that addresses that stuff pretty pretty darn well. So the next part, this is kind of the, the part that I want to get to. And what I want to talk about is how I strategize and how I do my on-ice uh, practice, basically. So if I get the ice to myself, that's the first thing I want to talk about. So if we get the ice to myself or a small group, I'm setting up the lesson or the drills or whatever the session, what I'll basically focus on. I'm going to split it up into three different sections. So one the first section, what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on the mechanics, the very basic mechanics. For Train 2.0, this is called the source code. Um, so you're going to do edge work, so very basic edge work. You're going to go through um, different very basic skating movements. It's all going to be skating. It's all going to be getting your body, working the different things like the inner spring, um, which has to do with rotating the body, um, focusing on learning the inside edges, getting complete control over those, the outside edges, doing movements that you want to just come natural in the game. So this gives you a chance to get a lot of reps on those really quick, and then, then you're gonna flow into the second part. So the second part now is where you're gonna start to put it into practice. So you're gonna add a puck, whether it's at the end of that first third or in the second third, you're gonna add that puck and you're gonna start making moves at top speed and you're gonna start putting them in game situations. So making fakes around pylons, making tight cuts, making really anything it's going to be creative I, I it's very very detailed i couldn't really break that whole piece down but the key is like number one is go through the basic mechanics lots of reps dial it in get that volume in and then two putting it in game situational stuff now three is where you kind of go into putting it working on kind of the finishing um the battling uh it's like very very game situational now so now it's actually doing a little mini game one-on-one -on -one in the corner. Maybe it's a two-on-two -two game in a small area. Maybe it's breakaways. Maybe it's uh, just taking contact, so someone hitting you and then absorbing that hit, then driving the net. And this is where you put it all together and you really bring that all the details together. And now you should have kind of memorized all the right movements. So now it's just becoming natural and being reactive. So reactive is the key in the third part. It's not just about putting on a, a setting a pile on there and making a move. Now it's about a player being there and making that move on that player. When you're reactive, that's what's going to translate a little closer to a game. So then, like the next thing you'd want to do is kind of like if you can get on the ice again soon, is being on the ice and doing shinny. So somewhere where you know you're going to get the pucks, you're going to be a little bit better player on the ice ideally, and you're going to be able to make that move and with some pressure and in a very game situation. So I hope that that part makes sense. I hope that helps. Um, as far as anything else after that, so if you were to say, say you expected to have a 50 minute or 60 minute session, let's say, and you expected to split up into 20 minute chunks for the thirds, and say you actually get an extra 20 minutes. So that extra 20 minutes, what I would suggest is playing around for a bit and then so splitting this extra time in half. So half of that time should be playing around, so like doing little Zorro moves, um, flicking the puck over the net, um, doing little Crosby moves, flicking the puck over sticks, just like fun stuff that really challenges your, your skill set. 
because that's what's going to allow you to kind of build your skill set over time so that you can in a game maybe a guy lays down you can flick the puck over him and make that jump over him so like get used to that stuff and then also get into some cardio work so don't be afraid to mix in like a couple hard laps and then do some drills where you're forcing yourself to be skilled because that's going to work on being fatigued while working on the skills so that's kind of that's pretty much the whole sum up right there so you can break it up into three parts and then if you get you get a bonus part then that's where you work on the fun stuff the stuff that is going to be just fun the, the pavel barber stuff stuff that i kind of shot today in my warrior promotional video not to brag but uh pretty excited about that did it with the hockey beard um yeah so we shot a lot of really cool footage i did some like one-handed little zorro moves some flicks over the net some other little cool drills that i've never seen anybody do that we just kind of came up with and we decided to try them and they worked so you guys are going to be able to see those on the instagram if you're not following me on instagram it's course and Searles, all one word um if you want to check that out that's i put a lot of cool content a lot of videos in my training uh, a lot of little tips and tidbits and advice on there so i hope you guys enjoy that um if you have any more questions hit me up and i will make sure to answer them in tomorrow's show or in a future show um, i really appreciate the questions that's what really helps me make these videos better for you guys and that's what keeps me rambling on and talking for really long periods of time so Hope I entertained you, hope I added some value, and I hope I, motiv I motivated you to want to work a little harder. So keep going this summer. Don't be, Make sure that you're pushing hard, you're getting on the ice as much as you can. Make sure you're doing everything you can to get better and leave no excuses on the table for this summer because you know what? If you slack off and things don't work out the way you want, that's on you. It's not on anybody else. There's no one else to blame. If you don't have access to ice, get on the rollerblades get a green biscuit, get a pickup stick that still works. Even a wooden stick doesn't matter. Stick handle, work on your shot. There's always, 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 always a way to get better. It, the limitation is your mind. And that's what the limitless mind is, is realizing that there's always something you can do to get better. And you just need to be willing to take advantage of that. So have a great day, guys. I hope you absolutely crushed it today when, or are going to crush it today, depending on what time you're watching this or listening to this. Um, make sure you check the podcast out, the Corson, Corson's, or no, it's the Daily C Audio Experience. That's what it is. So you can check that out on iTunes. If you can, leave me a rating on there. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and thank you very much. I really, really appreciate you guys. It's, this is so much fun. A lot of awesome things are happening, and uh, I can't wait for you guys to come along on the Daily C vlogs when I head up to BC in a couple weeks. So Vancouver, out to train with Jason E. It is going to be awesome. I'll see you guys in the next episode.